So yeah, like the uh, Planet Side 2 is something that haunts me. I'm just nonstop working on it or thinking about it or playing it. You, you're American and uh, you've been creating content for almost 10 years before joining the Planet Side 2 dev team. Now you're the lead designer for Planet Side 2. Can you just try, describe us the job, the job it is? Yeah, so lead designer is basically I am tasked with holding the, the vision uh, of the game and making sure that everyone on the team is kind of in, in line with that as far as like what work needs to be done. Um, and just the like the forward thinking of you know, subsequent updates and then actually doing the, the work too. I mean, we're, we're all designers and we're all uh, senior, like at this point, the, the team is like really uh, hardened um, and like veterans. So, so I, I view them more as like, peers rather than uh, traditional leadership where where somebody's like kind of um uh lording over you <laughs> i see so i have much um influence on the game right now so you pretty much decide where the game is going is that right yes yeah wow i mean it's it's always always team decisions so like i don't want to uh i don't want to take too much credit or anything like we have you know design meetings and we talk about things we say that like uh, what are our goals uh, for for escalation, for example? And I'm probably getting into too much detail um, now. If, uh, I don't know if you're you started the interview or whatever. You're just trying to to gut check. Yeah, it's uh, on. It's on. Okay. Well, yeah. Like so, for escalation, for example, something that we'll do is uh, we'll say like, okay, what are we what are we trying to uh, what goals are we trying to hit with this this update? And for us, it was like bring back veteran players because we have a whole backlog of veteran players who you know potentially quit the game. Uh, so what are, what are they interested in? Outfit based content is is a, a reason that was like commonly surfaced, and we uh, decided to make a very outfit centric or outfit centric update. Uh, and so like those sorts of decisions um, are kind of the uh, like the big overarching goals. And then we drill down and see like, okay, well, how do we make it cool? Uh, and what kind of things do we need for the game? And that is like, I, yeah, I, I got a lot of ideas, but it, the, the team like all contributes. And so it's, all yeah, right. it's always a combined effort. Did you know you've, you've uh, taken us uh, in a big roller coaster of emotions with the layoffs and then team building back up? Was it hard for you? Like, uh, Honestly, I'm so glad you survived all this. Like, <laughs> or you're, you're like a you're a figure for the Planet Side Two community. And uh, just a few months ago, I thought uh, the team was going to to die or something. Honestly, with the with how it went with Planet Side Arena, and now it's going back up. Like, uh, how did it happen right now? And now you you're about to drop a big big update. How was it living all this? I. Uh... So, well, with with matters like this, it's kind of it's it's hard for me to speak on. So let me see if I can do it uh, somewhat delicately. Uh, as like within the company, we we tend to know what's going on uh, beforehand. It's not like you know, layoffs, for example, are, are an absolute surprise. Like they can all see the the direction that the wind is blowing, and some people like are trying to get out uh, beforehand and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but for me. Uh, Planet Side 2's uh, population was was on the decline, and it certainly. So, my goal, like my my personal goal, like it doesn't even matter what what the the rest of the uh, like what, what the company wants or whatever. My my goal was yeah. to raise populations of Planet Side 2 over time. Awesome. And like. I, I want more players in the game. Like that was my absolute goal. Because when you get more players, you make more money. You make you know you make the game more lively, and so like it hits all of the marks that that a game needs to to thrive. So uh, more population was my thing. Um, it was very difficult to sustain that. I think within the first uh, year or maybe two years that I was on the team, we were able to kind of staunch the bleeding, and. It was a roller coaster for like if you think it was a roller coaster for you guys, it was, it was definitely a roller coaster for us. <laughs> I like imagine. Had, um, yeah. Yeah, like there was. Uh, so when I when I got here, uh, this was 
just before H1Z1 really took off. And like over December, they, they hit this massive uh, audience in, in China and just like exploded. The game is, I, for as much crap as people give H1Z1, like it is the driving force for the battle royale genre. And that's wow. something to be proud of. Like it's it's something that like all the other games were like, hmm, this is making a lot of money. Like we could probably do something like this. And then, you know, then just uh, typical market things, they they try to, to make a product that's comparative or uh, or better. And so you had games like, you know, Fortnite that eventually came out and Apex Legends that eventually came out, which are all very polished, you know, uh, a lot of power within those companies and mass appeal as well. So, uh, yeah, so H1Z1, um, it took a lot of uh, our teammates. It was just, it was, uh, it was me and it was uh, Nick Silva, who was the producer that you guys will remember. Yeah. Um, and then Paul Jajo. It was just like, it was us three doing stuff for, for like a year. We'd get support from some of the art team and some of the UI team, like it, but the core group was three. That's insane. For, for about a year. Right. To yeah. To see a and game it's... like that with so much complexity being developed by three people. This is why I have a, I so much respect for what you've been able to, to do. Yesterday when I was watching Kefri's stream, I realized how deep this game, this game was like, uh, with the amount of customization for the characters and hold all, all the variables i'm like how can they test all this i'm sure like i, I myself with 5k hours of playing i haven't tried all the play styles how can they balance all this and sometimes i wonder how you do it guys because it's like you, think... did you have a prior to plan side 2 any game game development experience no no i got lucky i uh, in that i was like I, my my dream uh, is a game, and also we can go back to the the, the rest of the question too. Uh, as far as the roller coaster goes, I started telling a story, but mm -hmm. I got, got sidetracked. But um, as far as this, like my my dream has always been to make a game, uh, and that's that's ever since I was a kid. I don't think that I ever wanted to go to space. I don't think that I ever cared about dinosaurs. You know, just all the <laughs> the typical uh, dreams that you have when you're a, a kid. But I just wanted to make games. And I, uh, so every, every step that I kind of took was, was me getting closer and closer to that. It was very intentional. And, um, let's see, I started back in, uh, that's very in interesting. Now that you talk about this, I remember some of your armchair discussion videos, but didn't, didn't realize it was a long, long-term goal of yours. Oh yeah. 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 So this started back when I was in, uh, so playing tribes one. And I was just a, a kid, or actually, Tribes Two is probably a better example. Like I started to kind of experiment with um, with uh, scripting and that sort of thing. And then actually in a, a CS Source, I did um, I did some heroes uh, for this. Uh, there was like a superhero mod, and I did like a, a Goku version. Or anyway, I'll probably get get uh, get sidetracked. But it was like a reverse uh, Spider Man. I don't know if you you played any of the, the hero mods for. For Counter Strike Source. No, but, but I wanted to know, uh, like, uh, if you had previous experience, did it help you for Plain Side 2? Because the game is pretty unique. I don't know how the game is like that. Like, uh, how did your prior experience help you for your current job? Do you know? I think, uh, I think it was it's more indirect. Like, a lot of times you can say, like, uh, or a lot of people who get into this industry are, like, they'll start in QA, right? And they'll they'll be testing the games. And that gives them their information on the game itself. And then eventually, hopefully, they get a break and then they get to become a designer on the game. Uh, and that's like if they if they prove themselves like, you know, forward thinking and then uh, if they can come up with with good ways of, of doing things. And a lot of times it's just like like you spent a lot of time at the company and and you happen to get lucky because like we have a, a lot of like really cool, uh, smart QA uh designers and, and have or uh, QA members and we have over time but like the opportunities to to get uh, a job in game design are, are always slim like really really slim so for for people who came up in QA I thought it like it's it's a really cool thing uh, to me and then my story is is I was just like doing game design related stuff and similar to to QA like you kind of demonstrate that you have some thoughts on that and then it comes down to the the interviews and you say like 
uh, the, like uh, I remember uh, Andy Seitz having an interview with me and Kriegs having an interview with me and just like everybody on the team I actually went around, talked to them all one by one. And uh, and we all, uh, I, I spoke to all of them, got to to answer like their, their questions about game design and, and that gave them like a comfort level with saying like whether or not I, I should or shouldn't be uh, a game designer like with the company. And fortunately, they, they thought that uh, that they could work with me. So originally, awesome. I was doing some, Man, I was doing awesome. a contract work. <laughs> you surprised us when you when it got announced that you were when I working with with Daybreak. Uh, it's like I don't know other stories of content creators that now became developers for the for the game they were they were posting videos on. Do you know other examples like that? I think the only so at uh, at TwitchCon there was um. There was a representative from from Eve Online, and she was telling me that that they have this this council, or rather, um, say I, I don't want to miss misspeak, but uh, but they definitely have game design or game designers who were community members, because like Eve Online, similar to Planet Side Two, is like vast in just the amount of knowledge that you have to have on the the game, and I think that's a really helpful thing. Yeah, I see. Because yeah. now, because since we have. We saw that you've been posting videos on Planetside 2. You have thoughts on the game. Like it's very easy to to imagine you develop it uh, and implement actually all the ideas you've been talking about for years. And there is a video that I loved from you. It was like 100 ideas for Planetside. I hope you come back to this video sometimes. I think. Uh, did you comment on it before? Like I, I think you you did a video where you pointed to. To my video, uh, and and talked about some of the things that that were on it. I, I can't remember. I did one. But... I did many suggestion videos, but one that I was talking about is uh, is from you. It was called one one hundred ideas for September, I think, and it was like a, a whole load of ideas to improve Blind Side Two. Oh right, right, right. and like uh, yeah, that was um. I, I I was wondering like did you had the like prior projects for Blind Side like. Things you think you thought would be easy to implement, but now that you're in in the development team, you realize that they are much harder to do than what you thought. Um, yes, <laughs> and kind of, kind of no at the same time. The so something that uh, I think the I think we all kind of struggle with as far as like if you're a community member or whatever, just outside looking in, is that you say like, oh, why don't they just do this? And just, yeah. by the way, is, is a bad word. Like <laughs> anytime, <laughs> like it's because there's no just doing anything unless it's been like proven and done in the past. Like even with uh, with this escalation update, there were a lot of things, a lot of systems in place that we thought would work, but we were like using them in, in ways that you're not supposed to. Uh, and because of that, there was like a lot of uh, additional work that needed to be done to get them to the the proper place that they needed to be. So as far as me, like doing, uh, just like making ideas, I'm, I'm actually, I'm like a mad scientist where I'm taking pieces of systems and like able to piece them together. And it's, it's like a really, really fun, uh, exciting part for me because I love, I love creating things. And the, our, our engine is like a spider web of just like all sorts of different pieces. But, um, like I was saying before, I, I started doing contract work for, for Daybreak, uh, before, like sometime before they actually hired me on. And during the contract work, I was in Connecticut still and I was working remotely and I had access to, um, to some of like, like all the design tools. And I would just sit there and like I would go and reverse engineer how everything was done. Wow. And, and that's, that's what like it was. I was, uh, self motivated to, to learn all these things. And because of that, like I can take it now and I can say like, okay, we could do this. You know what we can do? We could take this system and like this change will need to be made. And then we can make this into this cool thing. So that's sort of, yeah, it's, it's an exciting it's problem for so sure. You're, but... you're not forced to build everything from the ground up. You can take like uh, other systems, re-adapt re them and re-implement them. Is that it? Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends a lot on what you're trying to do, but, but yeah, totally. I mean, and it's not to say that it doesn't come with problems. So, like, the uh, when the bastion's moving, for example, we had an issue where the the collision would get offset, uh, and that's because we were using the uh, we're using that system in such a way that it wasn't intended to, and it was fighting this other system that exists. So, wow, 
<laughs> we had to figure out how to how to resolve that. Um, it just like all sorts of little stuff like this will will pop up, and you won't expect it uh, necessarily. And and that, I think that's where the majority of the work comes in is uh, is like making new things. Uh, it takes work, obviously, but uh, but even when you're using past things, like finding the 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 bugs within it or finding ways to kind of expand it is uh, that's where the where the code comes in. I see. Actually, I had very high uh, expectations at the beginning when I was doing my suggestion videos. I was just suggesting things that, uh, for me, looked uh, easy to do. But uh, then I realized that things took a really long time to do, and I realized it was it must have been hard actually to implement all this. So I've be become much more humble when I was asking for things like uh, I was asking like for very simple changes that um, that were in the UI, not uh, not in the core of the game. Because I realized it, it would have been hard actually to to do even small changes with a small team. I think that uh, a lot of times you have to ask the question like, is it the right time to do this? And because because anything, yeah, it, it takes us time. So it depends on what our priorities are. I think it in kind of an unfortunate circumstance uh, that we were in for a long time on the the PS2 dev team uh, when it was like three or six of us is that we. We we're just like grinding nonstop from update to update, trying to make make something you know that the players could get excited about. And a lot of times uh, that ended up being something that we couldn't like finalize or, or couldn't you know, finish. And and it takes so it's, this is kind of one of my biggest regrets is that based on the resources that we have or had at the time, um, we couldn't we should have scoped down the updates and made them smaller. And it's kind of a, a risk reward thing because. Like the smaller update, like is it going to be exciting enough that players are going to want to come back? Because again, getting back to my personal goal of raising uh, populations over time, or even like like keeping them static, so we're not just like bleeding out. Um, it was, I think that that was a big challenge is figuring out what kinds of updates to release, and I think we misstepped a lot of times uh, with just the scope because things would take like longer than we thought they would take to implement, or we'd be putting out fires on the servers or, or whatever else. And that would take days, and you know, so even if we had like a whole list of things that we want to do, like ne don't necessarily have the time, so we have to prioritize. I see, and I wanted to ask you also, why did you committed your um, your your channel and now your work to Side Two? Like, uh, what is it so special about this game, uh, according to you? Oh, that's uh, I guess that's that's the question that it kind of comes back to, right? Like, Planetside Two is has ruined a lot of games for me. <laughs> I think I don't think I'm the only one who shares the sentiment. I uh, it's the same for me. I have a yeah, hard time just, to like, play other games. And I, I will. Like I'll I'll go play, you know, the new Battlefield or the new Call of Duty or the new whatever, whatever. But I, I tend to come back to Planet Side too. And I, I do that because it's it's unique. Like it has it has this like feel and also this the sense of uh comfort for me where I just like I understand all the you know mechanics and I I enjoy like the types of gameplay that you can engage in, and like it's a game where you can just jump in and like, like I just want to chill out and ride a flash around, you know, just just do that instead of like shooting people, and that's totally totally possible. Like it's not this, it's not always intense unless you make it intense. I think Planet Side Two is a game that you can kind of make your own uh, pretty easily, and that that to me is uh, it's exciting. The concept of it is exciting, um, and maybe that's what. What spurred the the channel on? I think before that I was doing Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect Three multiplayer uh, guides, and and that, that was like way back, and very little traction on, on that sort of stuff. It was uh, because that that like everything was saturated. People already had you know access to to guides uh, about Mass Effect stuff. But as far as Planet Side Two, the opportunity of the channel is that there I don't don't think there were enough people trying to help new players. I don't think there were enough people trying to um, trying to like foster the uh, the games community. And to me that was a was a need. So it's something that I enjoyed being Planet Side 2. And then well and then also helping people too is, is something that I like to do. And that kind of came together and it was just a really good fit for the channel. And there were a lot of uh, YouTubers who like they totally had more subscribers or whatever, but they they fell off. Like they stopped doing content. They even not not just the big ones, like like Level Cap or uh, 
Sergeant Merrill or, or anything like that, but just like some of the smaller ones too, like a Kool-Aid line. I would watch that guy. Yeah. Um, or STL Youngblood, like would watch that guy. And like eventually my subscriber counts passed, passed theirs. And I think it's because it was just this constant uh, uh, delivery on a need that the community had. I agree. I still think there's drought of content on this game. Like there's some things to cover. I would love that there is more more montages with the Amaterasu, with the Fujin and stuff, but there is almost none of this. Yeah, I, I, I think it's for people who make YouTube content. Um, for me, it's it was a so my my dad told me that uh, like your your hobby. Um, <laughs> God, what did he tell me? Your uh, your hobby becomes a job when it takes up more time than than your job does. And for me, that was like, I was using YouTube as a, as a hobby, as something that I really enjoyed. Uh, and then there was a, a transitional point where I was like, oh, well, maybe I can, maybe I can do this like for a living. And YouTube, like, as you know, like, does, you do not make much money from it at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. but I had this, <laughs> I had this audience of, um, uh, subscribers who have kind of come to believe in what I believed in as far as making the game better and like, like trying to, um, try to elevate the community and uh, and they were willing to like like donate and like you know help me actually do this as a as a living uh, which was the the time period before I became a developer and it was it's like a it was a really uh, powerful thing because it, it kept me um, wanting to do content and I, I feel like a lot of youtubers don't have that they don't have that that safety net right like they have People can do YouTube videos for for a hobby, but nowadays I think that there's kind of a culture where it's like you you want to get your videos seen, and in order to get them seen, you have to have a following, uh, and in order to have a, a following, you need to make a lot of videos, and uh, in order to make a lot of videos, you have to have like a passion for it. So, so about Planet Side Two, um, I don't think there's enough people, just like quantitatively, that have this this passion and this drive to make videos because they're either not going to feel the, uh, the reward of like, like the, the good feeling from like making a video and seeing all the comments and that sort of thing. Uh, because, because Planet Side 2's player base is like, it's pretty small comparatively. Yeah. Uh, I actually you know, had um, many friends and even my family sometimes to tell me, why don't you play other games that have bigger, that have bigger player base? So you become like a Fortnite famous or like Apex famous. And I was like, I don't like play to play these other games. <laughs> and they cannot understand this. They're like, what's so special about Blind Side 2? Why do you keep playing this game that has 5k players? And uh, I yeah, was like, try yeah. it out, you, you, you'll understand. So many people are, told a... me to, to change game, and I, I was like, fuck this. Right, uh, Lone Hawk is actually a good example of that, where he, he did start in Planet Side 2, and then he went on to uh, to do Overwatch content, and he became very, very popular. And that's like a lot of times it's, it's dependent and he, he totally has skill uh, and his, his videos are great. I think he, he did a TED talk recently. Uh, I watched that. It, am, I, am I saying his name right? Uh, Lone Hawk. It's anyway, amazing. Yeah, um, I know him. I didn't know he did a TED talk. That's epic. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. And so the the audience, uh, just the size of the, the player base matters a lot for the amount of content that you get uh, because it's like when you can appeal to more people then it you know, you see like more people are seeing your videos and it helps spur you on and that sort of thing. So it, it yeah, I think it depends for a lot of people and maybe we'll get to that point someday. But uh, I totally get yeah. what you mean. Like it can get discouraging putting so much effort in videos that uh, that will not get watched by, by that many people. I had this dilemma many times, but uh, at some point I, I decided to, to just to just do it because uh, because I love it. And, uh, and just believe strongly that it will work out. And, um, voila. So, I, I, do, do, I, I'm sure you read all the drama about you on Reddit and people accusing you of everything. Does it affect you? <laughs> um, this is hilarious. I think over, yeah, yeah. Over time, I have, um, I have learned whose opinion to value and a lot of, so what's what's interesting about the uh, the Reddit community is that uh, they're on this platform where they can be very vocal, um, and even though they're not saying things that are necessarily like uh, the right things or even like 
like accurate, they they could get like a lot of visibility on on their causes and that sort of thing. Um, so it's what I've determined like over the past three almost four years of of dealing with this and uh, kind of uh, working on this game is that the state of the game is the the main driver for how players are going to uh, interact with you on Reddit. So when you are making, uh, for example, if you're making balance changes at a time where the community is already uh, like not happy with you, like the majority of the of the discussion is going to be negative. And I saw this over and over and over again. Oh wow, you figured would... this out. I didn't notice yet. Go. Yeah, it's it's kind of um yeah, but as far as me personally, uh I I have a much uh thicker skin now. Like I think over the past three years, my my number of uh, fights with the community members have gone down drastically. <laughs> Because I I'm not the kind of person who will like let people walk all over me, and usually that means that I'm I'm gonna like challenge them. Uh, but on the internet, it's a it's a thing where like there's no there's no accountability, right? Like I get to say whatever I want from behind a screen, uh, and like you just can't you can't deal with it, like or like you, you can't uh, can't do anything about it. And it's it's like uh, so when community members like you know they're, they're targeting me as far as like you know I'm the cause of X Y and Z. Uh, it's for me. It's, it's kind of like fighting with, with the uh, the gloves off, where I, I can't do much uh, to interact. So, like the the best way to to deal with uh, toxic community members is to either a ignore them or b like kill them with kindness. And honestly, I'm not the kind of person who can uh, <laughs> kill people with kindness because I I'm very uh, like grounded, and it's well I, I shouldn't even say that because I, I know a lot of grounded people who who uh, totally. Like those are just their personality. It's like Tony Morton is a good example of. Uh, actually, he's like he's like the uh, the yin to my yang, where where he's like always positive. You know, he's very uh, like upbeat, and he can you know talk to a community member who is like said really nasty things and be like, like hey, you know, haha, like this is kind of just the reality and, and things. And then people are people are okay with that. Like they they understand that like you are you're addressing them in such a way that you uh, you respect their opinion. Uh, as a as a human being, uh, and even if they're not right, you know, even if um, if what they said is like is negative, that's not necessarily the stance that they'll continue to take. So, so he, the way that he interacts is is uh, is good like that. But my my personality is like is really hard for me to to speak uh, in a way that that doesn't um, rub people the wrong way. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to not to offend people on the internet. People are get offended. Of about nothing, they get about offended about the game. Like so, now how how do you know which opinions to to value and which to discard? It's so uh, we have a a massive amount of of players, like comparatively, um, who will give us feedback. And when the feedback is uh, is very like anti, uh, let's see, how do I say this? When the when the sentiment is negative about the individual, like that's when I think that you can discard that information. Like if they're saying like you're uh, stupid, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. Like if if there is <laughs> like there can still be still be some points within that that are just like like data points where you can say like okay that's you know this is an actual problem or whatever. But the problem is that we have have hundreds of people who are all saying the same thing, and a lot of them say it nicer. <laughs> so like why should I? care about your opinion who like it, it's obvious that you have like a bone to pick with me uh on an individual level and can't uh and it's like potentially clouding your your opinions of this feature or this uh or this change or this update um in a way that isn't rational that that this is probably uh somebody that i can ignore and like fortunately there's enough good community members who are able to deliver feedback in a way that is uh balanced uh and isn't like it's it's focused on the on the topic instead of the person where where there's like there's there are so many data points that i can take into consideration that aren't from those those toxic community members okay i see so better stay nice if you do suggestions 
Pretty much. I mean, devs are, are people too. And in order for me to, uh, in order for me to, to just uh, have the continue... motivation to read, to read honestly. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, regardless, honestly, I'll I'll read it either way. <laughs> like that's just kind of what happens. But as far as me devoting my personal time and attention to your comment or your your feedback or whatever, like that takes uh, a level of respect for for like somebody else as a human being. Why should I invest my time in you? when you are are kind of unwilling to, to view me through that lens. All right. So the escalation is dropping tomorrow, right? Yes. What is the most exciting for you about this update? What's like the most significant ch change that's coming um, according to you? Uh, let's see. I, I like the potential for sanctuary. Like people might point out Bastion Fleet Carrier. Oh really? Yeah, like I wasn't the, expecting this answer. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but Bastion Fleet Carrier is like um I think that it creates a lot of exciting moments. And I'm curious to see whether or not those moments continue past like a few months. Um we we try to make Bastion somewhat rare in that like it takes time and resources to develop and you know, we can always tune those values up and down. Like we, we time locked it basically like the fastest you can get one is 13 hours. Like if you have all the resources and you craft all the components at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and, and that was to, to make it so like these, these moments are kind of rare and awe inspiring and that sort of thing. Um, but I think there's inevitably going to be some tuning that takes place after that. So as far as like a constant, like something that we, we know can be really good. Like I, I always think about like a, like the long term, the, the future. And for me, like sanctuary has a lot of potential where it's, uh, we can, we can build it out, um, and add a lot of functionality there. And it kind of represents planet side two as a whole, moving more to, uh, an MMO and less to a, uh, to just a shooter. Oh, um, I and, see. so yeah. how do you see it becoming in the long term? Like, uh, are people are going to be able to, to speak with each other from other faction? Or um, uh, uh, what do you oh, see? Do, like, uh, are, are people? Uh, are, is there going to be proximity chat uh, across factions? Do you think it's coming? I... <laughs> uh, maybe. This could so be I, I, I think we should. I, I totally think that we should. Um, but then also be willing to to change it if things get out of hand. I, I don't think that people are going to go to sanctuary specifically to troll people. At least not all the time. Um, and it's a it's a good environment to. Uh, to be social in, like that's what we want to do. So, so I do think that that should happen. Um, in the cross faction chat, uh, well, honestly, we just need a new channel that says sanctuary, but right now you can use the all chat and, and talk, you know, uh, same as you, you typically do. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that cross faction chat should come. We just, uh, like with anything, I think that if you, if you're increasing player counts, like the, the number of, uh, of toxic elements are also capable of rising and it only takes one toxic individual to ruin a game for a lot of individuals so we just need to be careful that's all yeah i see so what's the long-term vision of the sanctuary do you have a more precise id so sanctuary certainly needs to be a, a hub for for the new player experience um or at least a place where where you can come back to for downtime because despite being an FPS, um, slower paced methods of gameplay and points where you can, uh, you can kind of like exit the, the frantic nature of the game and kind of, uh, relax while still maintaining that community of like talking to your outfit mates and like doing, uh, you know, all these social related activities is important. So, uh, as far as building out sanctuary, I think that we, uh, there's, I think that the future of that is going to primarily center around NPCs that you're talking to, to either like get uh, like missions uh, to do in game, which is something that we haven't talked about, uh, or uh, like access to to content that you, or like vehicles and items and, and that sort of thing that you don't necessarily have like right out the gate. So like, um, Actually, I can't give you any good examples without ruining any surprises, <laughs> so we should probably move on. Oh, man. I was waiting <laughs> for this. Uh, 
Okay, it's fine. So did you have time, uh, honestly, with the with the roller coaster I was talking about earlier? Did you have time you wanted to give up? You were like, uh, "F this game, I'm out." Did you have time you wanted to do that? I. So, let's see. Well, I stopped when I was talking about like us as a three person team, right? So eventually, like we did pretty well in the the first year with just three people, and then after that, we were able to to hire on uh, Zach and Garrett and uh, and Drew, and those were all. Uh, uh, amazing assets to the team and it, it doubled our team size. <laughs> so, uh, and then those, those guys, uh, they took, um, they took like a, a fair amount of time, like six months to a year to kind of like train up and get on the, the same level, uh, as we, we needed them to be. And, uh, actually pro- probably last time, like they, they were, they were cruising. They're all very, uh, motivated, very, uh, uh, interested in, in what they were doing. So it was good. Um, and during that time, I, I felt, I felt like we were making progress. Like I felt that our potential as a game had, had the, uh, the, the game had, had a chance to, to flourish. But as our, uh, scopes kind of, like it, it became more obvious after that point. Like as we tried to, to reach for like, like features that were a little bit beyond just the, the three person team that we, we still didn't have like, enough uh enough resources to make like real substantial change within the game wow and it's been frustrating i see what you talk about like uh, when drew was uh working on the construction system you added the arbitral strikes and a few other things the routers is that it uh oh as far as far as what when uh when drew and paul joined the team you said you were getting some traction getting uh, when you doubled your your team you, you had m- much more resources and you were starting to be able to do more, more things, but you, you got limited again by, by your, by your numbers. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. So there were, you know, I, I can't even, let's see, I can't point out specific examples. Actually, um, so NSO update, uh, is probably the most recent example of somewhere that we, uh, actually, I mean, or you could say it's the DX11 update where we, we had like, really strong uh, ideas and motivation, but never got enough resources. Like it was intended to be something that was, uh, well, for one, like DX11 fumbled out the gate. Like we were still dealing with the repercussions of that, you know, a year later. And NSO was intended to be like uh, a system that we cultivated. Like we, you know, gave it all the, the missing parts, like the max unit and the main battle tank and all the weapons that it was missing and kind of made it its own faction. Uh, and, and that would continue interest, but it's just like, like with many systems, it kind of just like you get to the phase one and then it's like, okay, well, we, we can't go back and change this now because we either don't have, uh, the right, um, motivations, like, uh, I guess I don't want to say as a company, but we, we got in this loop where it's just like, we needed to make a certain amount of money. And in order to do that, we need to release certain kinds of updates and, it was it was like this doom loop of we're just making stuff to get to the next update, and and it was really really detrimental because we just we straight up didn't have enough manpower to uh, to actually make it, uh, yeah, to actually deliver like a, a polished product. It, it was really frustrating. It was extremely frustrating. I see. Now I I, I have to ask this personal question. It's because uh, mm-hmm. in one of the updates you you removed the the ability for the IRL Combatant 5 to recharge the ambusher jets uh, immediately, instantly on a kill. Do you know uh-huh. why you did this? Did you have complaints? Uh, only from you. <laughs> really? <laughs> Not only from you, but... Uh, no, no, it was... Um, no, uh, the, did you have complaints about this uh, this implant being OP or something? Oh, gotcha. Because I missed uh, this, uh, this feature so much. No, it was it was more that we... We needed to make the implant uh, more more useful for for more types of gameplay, and I think that the changes to the ambusher jump jets in general, kind of like just the fact that you could see it, you know, take up the energy bar, and then it'll, like you know, like when you can jump and when you can actually you know, use the the ability. I think that it was a uh, I think it was a good change. Um, I didn't see too many repl- uh, complaints about ambusher five specifically, but there was a lot of feedback on like like don't even use this implant unless it's Unless it's the max rank. 
<laughs> and only use it for ambusher. So it was just like it was too it was way too specific. Uh and I think the changes that, that we made both to ambusher jump jets, because because yeah, you know, people were complaining about ambushers just in general. Uh, and they still continue to, but I think it's it's in a, a better place now. Um yeah, they, they existed. It was just kind of like low level background noise like like most uh, balance changes are. It's true, actually. This implant was uh, not very effective at uh, lower ranks, but at rank 5, it was extremely fun with the ambusher jets because it recharges mm -hmm. instantly on a kill. But when uh, you have removed this, honestly, I was so pissed. I was so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I was jumping around having fun at, and everything, and one day, it disappeared. And uh, they, they had, a, had a point where like, I was like, uh, did they remove this because of balance? Are just to, to accommodate other changes, and I, I finally figured out that it was just to to accommodate other changes. But honestly, I have to tell you, it was, I was, it was a little bit of both, you know, because <laughs> yeah, the, the jumping around instant like shotgun playstyle, like it's the shotgun uh, ambusher jump jet shotgun is still effective. Uh, yeah, you can, you can probably speak to that, but it was yeah, it was just kind of it was a little bit ridiculous before. So I think that the changes that we made were just kind of a, a good. Uh, like all around balancing, <laughs> balancing thing. Okay. So, what are your favorite playstyles in Prince Uh, so I'm. Let's see. What is my favorite playstyle? I don't know. I kind of just like I do things. Uh, I play a lot of engineer, but I don't play. Uh, I, I use engineer for uh, for like anti infantry. Like I'll, I'll just, I think it's it's more more fun. Um, like engineer is my most played uh, on my VS character, and I I like the the lack of downtime from the. You know, we made some changes a, a long while ago where engineers have a faster um, like shield uh, delay, and uh, so that's that's a lot of fun. And then I just like to do like random stuff, like just jump into you know, a flash and go like cruise around or. Or like I'll, I'll pull a, a lightning tank and you know drift in circles or, or whatever and like and shoot at people and just make them really frustrated. I, I really like to fly too, and uh, I feel like it's it's kind of um, I'm a target when I'm in the sky. Uh, like if people see the name, they just they totally go after me. It doesn't even of course it doesn't even matter. Like they'll chase me all the way to the warp gate. It's and uh, to that end, it's like it's kind of frustrating where I'm just like, hey, I'm just trying to just trying to fly, bro. <laughs> but uh. But yeah, it's really fun. I think our flight model is probably, it's the only uh, game whose flight model I can actually uh, enjoy. Like, I, I can't stand uh, the flying in circles of, like, Battlefield games or anything like that. Yeah, so um, true. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so, like flying that. is and fun, then, yeah. In Plain it's like, extremely fun and challenging. You end up yeah. crashing most of the time, but you had fun, like, uh, going fast. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. So, do you still work on Usher? Do you know what's the state of the Usher map? So, I think I've said this a few times so far, but but Usher is in a state of like indefinite hold. Um, so there's there's no plans to to follow through with Usher right now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I shouldn't say like so. If if we do Usher, we need to start over. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Why? Why? Because the so. When I was doing the the terrain, um, it was like it was all. So the, the work that that was done on Osher was it was like it was just me, nobody else, and and it's not good. <laughs> like there's <laughs> there's a lot when it comes to uh, an entire continent where like I was the stuff that I was doing like it was good for a first pass, but in, unless we get art, unless we get um, the Kind of the terrain itself, just the uh, the way that I had exported the the terrain, it was like really um, uh, stepped, like like the image. So so how the, the terrain works is that you're like you're using a height map um, and then creating the uh, well, I guess the the heights of different um, terrain objects uh, based on that. But mine was like it was not great, so uh, because of that, it was like kind of the terrain is almost pixelated in a way where it's just like kind of jagged and going through and having to like smooth all that out was, it's like an absurd amount of time. And uh, it's easier if we, like now that we have an art team, start from scratch. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. And 
Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, we could invest all the time into it. And I was really keen on doing that. Like I, I wanted I wanted OSHA really bad <laughs> where I was like, I, I wanted to to come home and just like work on it every night. But a lot of stuff got in the way, like a lot of stuff got in the way. And you can just tell by how tumultuous the, the company was where it's it's like, yeah, that's that kind of like, makes sense. Yeah, you hype this like crazy when you showcase the, I, uh, the three companies. I know, it's, it's like my greatest disappointment because I don't like to, to do that unless we're going to follow through. Uh, on something and I was confident at the time you know and then, then things happened and as as they usually do that that throws kind of a monkey wrench in things and that's kind of what excites me right now with the uh, with the rogue planet team is that we have all these people uh, who who all like they're very skilled in their uh, in their different areas and we have like a lot of manpower to make things happen so like a new continent it's not out of the question and Honestly, I would be mis misspeaking if we uh, if I said that we didn't have plans for a new continent. Um, so I, I take back the bit that I said earlier. But um, yeah, so we'll we'll see how it all plays out. That's awesome. I wanted to know actually how did you do to build a, a, a whole continent on PlanSet to like uh, do 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 you start with the lattice and then you build above it, or you have like a big template continent and. Uh, you build above it. I was wondering if if someone from the public could help in this. Do, do you know? Um, so our tools are, uh, at least the terrain editor tools are proprietary. So we wouldn't be giving those out to people. Um, whether or not that's something that like like base designs can be ported in, like I, I think all that stuff is possible, especially with a, enough time. Um, but I don't necessarily think that it would be helpful. There's Yeah, I, I mean, I understand the desire for the, the community to help out. And it's a really cool thing uh, that they want to do that. And some of the things that they've created have been uh, helpful in, or like a, like helpful in visualizing what, what could be. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it, it would perform well in game. Like, and we could always take that stuff and then, you know, uh, like take a, a base design that they made, for example, and like place it in the game and then then make tweaks on it from there. Like that's that sort of thing would be possible. But I don't think we're willing to um, to figure out the pipeline to make that happen, uh, at least not now. And with with enough like resources, you don't necessarily need that either. So it's kind of this this weird place. Like if we had a player studio for that sort of thing, like you know years ago, like maybe it would have made sense. But but right now, probably not. Uh, but as far as your question, um, the uh, how you make a continent. So first you start with the uh, there, there's some software like uh, like World Machine or uh, World Creator that can help you uh, create a height map. And then that's, uh, well, I guess that's the second step. First step is just to plan out what the continent should have, like where the plateau should go and like where the bases are going to go. Uh, and then that helps inform you on on how your lattice is going to work. So like Hassan, for example, is a it's a good uh, indication of, of how, uh, or... If you look at Hassan's lattice, like everything is mostly symmetrical, where they have you know, all the warp gates that are equidistant and the all the yeah you feel the a difference are equidistant. In, uh, the yeah, continents Hassan evolving like... over time. In Dar es Amir, yeah, well... Amir Hassan, they're like they're getting better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it's unfortunate that um, that we haven't like had a chance to go back to Hassan and like I don't know that that place is just so so dreary. Like there's the lattice is the best of of any continent, but the the gameplay there is it's hard to to make the argument that it's it's very like love hate relationship I think and I think a lot of that has to do with like uh, just the the attitude of the swamps and just like how some of the flora works and then there's also uh, the the narrow chasms like some of the bases you have to go backwards and then go through this like chasm just to get to the next base instead of like going in a straight line and I think that one of the the things that you can see in uh, like Indar, for example, like Indar uh, excavation to Quartz Ridge, uh, Quartz Ridge camp, like very good flow back and forth, and and that's because it's like you uh, or same thing with with Red Ridge Garrison and uh, and Xenotech Labs. It's because you can see the base from or it's like it's like close enough to where you can kind of pull yourself along. Like when the battles begin to peter out. Uh, it, it pulls you to the next base instead of like being so far away that you're just like, well, I should just redeploy. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, so there's there's definitely a lot of lessons that have been learned over time, and I think that uh, we can at least put some of that information to use if we were to do a new one, uh, a new continent. But I think that at the same time, if we do a new continent, it should be a chance to experiment with different types of, of gameplay too. Please do. Do you have actually <laughs> plans to uh, keep updating in the SMR? Do you think they uh, yes. they need they need some updates or so, or we don't care? Oh yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we want to do this year, and I'm probably going to be telling you too much, um, is that we want to we want to tell stories uh, through through a, a changing world. So this will likely be uh, changes to to continents over time, and not like entire revamps where we're just like ripping the whole thing out and then like starting over or whatever. It means like tackling uh, certain parts of a continent. The to... ground gets nuked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, TI alloys, definitely. Uh, that whole thing. Um, but yeah, like for Esamir, for example, like there's a big problem in that the, the northeastern warp gate is just way too close to the northwestern one. Uh, so something like that, like moving that warp gate down uh, to make the warp gates more equidistant and then shaping the terrain uh, to make sense, like that would be a good thing to do. Um, uh, in little changes like this, like targeting certain bases and pulling, um, uh, so making changes to those and then doing some like terrain changes to help tell the story, whatever story that might be, I won't spoil anything, um, is, is something that we'd like to do like throughout the year. That's awesome. Honestly, I, I appreciate like the evolution in Indar. Like, uh, I remember Ceres Hydrophonics, uh, how many times that it has, been. now it's awesome. Ceres Hydrophonics, the <laughs> new one, the new trailers are awesome like uh, there's there's variety in the terrain uh, there's several ways to get to the control point several places to to deploy your sandy so yeah i really wish that uh, the, the, the you'll keep improving the maps i think it's um, one of the best way to improve the the gameplay for all the players i think yeah i agree so do you have plans to with the escalation update, uh, it's in, because it's for outfit leaders and uh, outfits in general, do you have plans to bring back uh, outfit leaders? For example, do you, do you, do you want to contact them or maybe offer them something, just to to poke them so so maybe they they'll come back? Do, do you have plans for that or do you, do you just uh, hope for organic um, organic reach? So the um, the organic reach so far has been. It's been really, really cool. Like seeing uh, so many old names pop up in like different Twitch chats and that sort of thing. Uh, but we we are totally going to do a marketing campaign. Yeah. Uh, as we we do with with any big update, like uh, DX11 totally had one. Uh, Construction totally had one. So yeah, no, we, we totally intend to do that, and we're going to be contacting you know a lot of our veteran players, you know who who have you know lapsed or. Yeah, just over time uh, to to kind of like give them a nudge and say like, hey, you know, come come check out our, our cool stuff. Awesome. So, who are the best players in Rock Planet games? <laughs> I never saw any one of them play except you. I think. I don't know how Andy um, plays. Are they noobs or are they good? Let's see. So, uh, Tony Morton has has spent some time in the game, uh, and I think that he's. He's just good at shooters in general. So, uh, but Kevmo uh, is is on the team. He has extensive, you know, gameplay in uh, in Planet Side Two, and uh, and then myself. Like I, I have a lot of time in Planet Side Two, obviously. Um, I, I won't say say who is best, but the uh, but the running joke at the office is that uh, they all want me on their team. <laughs> yeah, of course. We know your skills, man. So, do you sometimes play together in a squad, like, uh, like the RPG platoon, and conquer the continent? Do you do this sometimes? No, no. So I, I think that playing the game is is important, uh, and at the same time, like the the reality is that we, so the, the RPG team in general is is new. Uh, I mean, I don't. Not new as in like the individuals are, are new to the industry or whatever, but just like all, all coming together is new. And uh, finding time to to play the game internally has, I, I think it's a really rough thing. Like we even tried it on uh, with our six man team 
uh, you know, with, with Drew and everybody else. And it was really, it was really rough. Like we're all at different skill levels and stuff. And <laughs> honestly, like it wasn't a, it wasn't a fun experience. <laughs> Good trick. So like, <laughs> yeah, my my uh, encouragement is um, is that people should be taking this game home and like like learning to play it uh, on their own time. And it, but even that is difficult because we're we're working like crazy. Um, so and is there any members in RPG that uh, sometimes squad lead or platoon lead? Uh, only well, as far as I know, only me, and I haven't done that in years. Wow. Yeah. So like it's. We have to lean on the expertise of our community members when it comes to certain things. So, so yeah, like getting feedback on leadership is valuable for you then. Absolutely. And I think that all feedback is, is valuable. But at the same time, like there's there's like this mythos that I that I don't play in squads or I don't, you know, squad lead or platoon lead or even outfit lead. Like I, I was an outfit lead. You know, I was doing squad leads and I was doing open platoons. This is all like stuff that I'm well aware of. And I quit, honestly, because of the same reasons that everybody else has quit. So like as far as uh, being a, a platoon lead, like, yeah, it wasn't wasn't rewarding. It's really hard to herd cats. It's not something that I enjoyed doing. So like I understand the pain points that are associated with it. Uh, I confirm that it's uh, painful sometimes. But uh It's worth it. This is why actually I created this outfit so I can experience Planet Side 2 at its, full, at its fullest. I played solo for one year and then uh, you could quickly uh, reach your, the limits and you have to start creating a team and it creates a whole bunch of new challenges and new problems that I think are really interesting and you don't think about when you're just playing solo. So I think it's yeah. like a huge side to, to the game. And... Um, So I'm I'm so happy now to have this team, so I can experiment the uh, things in teams, and it's so much more powerful. So, what are the yeah. skills uh, uh, companies like RPG are looking for? If someone, for example, want to join the join the company to play to 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 work on Planetside 2, what are the skills that they're looking for? I uh, so it'll depend on on the specific job. Um, if there's any. I don't know if there's any uh, career openings right now at Daybreak, but I, I don't think we're, we're hiring on on RPG in particular. But with that being said, like any sort of uh, skill set from from game design uh, is is helpful to have. So like when we were uh, interviewing people uh, before we brought on Drew, we went through a bunch of applicants uh, who they were all like kind of fresh because we were hoping or we're trying to get a uh, an associate designer at the time, and What we what we really looked for in an applicant is their ability to work with the team, uh, anything that they've created in the past, and uh, just kind of their their general mentality on solving problems. And these are like these are really general attributes, but what they do is they culminate in someone who who will mesh well with your team. So even beyond like skill level, uh, you you need somebody who who can work well with with everybody else. All right. Interesting. You must be a team player like in Planet Side 2. Yep. So what are the changes? Uh, is there a change in the game that you made that made you proud? Like something you're really proud to have implemented or, or pushed to implement? Uh, let's see. There's so many changes that have taken place over time. If I can say my favorites, honestly, Light SO 2.0, uh, it, it has uh, reinvigorated my passion for the Light SO. The Ambusher Jets, I don't know if it's from you. And the fact that the re shields recharge uh, faster now, they used to recharge in 10 seconds, now it's 8 seconds. I think it has made the game much better, more, much more, uh, much less campy. It's like a simple change that made a huge difference. Mm, yeah, what, I think what are the... forget about that sort of stuff. What what change do you think you 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 really like or made you proud? Uh, God, let's see. This is a hard question. Is it because you made so much changes, or because uh, there's yeah, because it, it all blurs together. Because we've 
we've done so much. It was like, if you look at the, I guess it's just like the patch notes of the past three years, uh, it has, it's been a lot of really little changes and like some big changes at the same time. And then ultimately the game, I, I'd like to think that it's better for it overall, but it's, it's really hard to isolate a single one. I, wow. uh, yeah, I like that, that we, well, okay. I like a lot of the attempts that we did. Like, <laughs> starting, uh, uh, like, uh, redoing a lot of the squad indicators and that sort of thing. That's, that's I'm not, like, super proud of it. Not super interesting or anything. But it's just, like, I like this more, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really floundering on this question. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Okay, let's go on. <laughs> Uh, do you, do you happen to keep working at home? Like, uh, do do you happen to keep working on Planet Two when you're at home? Like, you go out oh of the God. office and you come home and you keep working. Does it happen? Uh, yes, way too often. I mean, just this past weekend, I spent uh, the entirety of the weekend uh, indoors redoing uh, a document that I was not satisfied with. Um, it's either it's like my. I, I'm on my third attempt now at this game design document, um, just because I wasn't satisfied with the first two. So, so yeah, like the uh, Planet Side Two is something that haunts me. I'm just nonstop working on it, or thinking about it, or playing it, and it's, uh, yeah, it's it's probably, I don't want to say it's like unhealthy to alarm anyone, but it's just like I'm really, really dedicated to this game. <laughs> like I'll go in on the, I'll go in on the the weekends. And just for fun, and just like, you know, work on stuff or like, you know, try different, uh, different things like experiments, um, with just like an idea that I had or like even an idea that I dreamed about. Like, there's all, all the stuff is, yeah, I, I really, really like creating things. It's, it's one of my, my favorite, um, uh, I guess pastimes. It's, it's kind of what, uh, what fuels me. And I mean, and this goes back to like, me doing map editing stuff uh, in World of War or uh, Warcraft Three, and just like I, I just love to make things. Awesome, yeah. I was uh, I was expecting this answer. Like this looks like a lifestyle more than a work. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. I need I need some social interaction. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you disconnect sometimes? What's your best favorite way to disconnect? Is it a big, uh, big joint or just uh, going in nature? <laughs> no, I'm no, I, uh, girls. I no, I, I don't. I don't have any vices, uh, unfortunately, except for video games. I think video games is probably a pretty big vice. I, I've gotten back into Mass Effect Andromeda lately, uh, just because I wanted to play through and see if there was any uh, interesting ideas that I can glean from that. Um, but and then before that, like I was playing a lot of Hades, actually. Their update is coming out, I think, tomorrow. So I'll, I'll be back into that for another 50 hours, I'm sure. Um, it, it's just like games in general. Uh, I, I really enjoy. And I, I try to, to go to the gym too. Like, cause, just because I need to get out of the house. So I like, I'll, I'll just go out and then. Looking yeah. good, man. Arshi says you're ripped. I'm not, That's cool. I'm not ripped. Really? I, I, you appear. Yeah, no, I don't think so. And I'm, man, I'm a far cry from what I used to be. Like, when I was in the Navy or, or even just like a year ago, I have not been treating myself well. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to get back into the gym and, and trying to stay healthy. It's a challenge. Okay. So what are your favorite games besides Planet Central and Mass Effect? What are the best? Uh, I think, so Hades has been a real joy. I think they, they nailed the, um, the roguelite genre. Or the the roguelite uh, core loop uh, better than than any roguelite that I've played before. Um, but mostly my my games are kind of like fleeting as far as interest goes. Like Witcher Three, I think is like the best game of uh, 2019, or or whenever it came out. Um, uh, and I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk. But as far as like like favorite games, I think. Yeah, I think just like the Mass Effect franchise and then Planet Side 2 and you know, Witcher, maybe like, maybe that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's very slim, but actually I was, I was expecting this. 
There's not. Oh no. <laughs> Why is that? Like, uh, I-, I love games. I've been playing games since I was a kid. Like, I tried them all. But uh, at some point, you like to. I, I found out about Planetside 2 and I stopped uh, trying many things. And I, uh, yeah. I didn't knew if it, if it was just me. But, uh, like, uh, at some point with single player games, you feel like you, you have uh, seen it all, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, yeah. Uh, I think you, I can't remember if you asked me this during the interview or beforehand, but, but yeah, Planetside 2 is, there's is something, something really special about this. Because of all the people that play, you feel like you're, you're part of history in the game. Because uh, hundreds of people are witnessing the same events. People are talking, shouting. It makes it feel like you're part of history. I think that one of the, the coolest um, and probably most underappreciated aspects of Planetside 2 is that you can you can just drop in whenever you want and then, then you leave. Like it's just the ability to, to do that. Like you drop in, you, you play the game that you want to play, whether that is, you know, riding around on a flash or whether it's, uh, you know, playing with your platoon mates or, uh, outfit mates, um, you know, or doing like very specific kinds of gameplay. Like maybe this day you want to just play an infiltrator or the next day you want to play heavy assault. Like you can, you can jump into the game and because it's such a sandbox, you can do whatever you want and then you just leave like when it's, when it's done. Uh, in, it's like you're not sitting in a lobby. And you're not waiting for a, a match to start. You're not looking for balanced teams or whatever. It's just like, you just get to go. It's clear. Sometimes I join, I join platoons just to hear what they're up to. I don't even know, want to play with them. I just want to know what they're talking about. What's what's up <laughs> in the platoon? <laughs> yeah. So w- what are the big plans for the future of the game? Like uh, after escalations, do you have uh, big things coming up? Uh, can you talk about it a little bit like Jesus? on what's coming mm-hmm. next next so i think uh this year we're going to try to we're going to try to establish uh, a better cadence where we should have um like escalation is a really big update uh but i think what matters more than this update is the the follow through like uh what comes after cuz i think we should be measuring success uh in terms of momentum uh, and, and that we, we create things, uh, and don't let them flounder. We just, we continue to, to build and, and make the game better over time. And we don't enter this like, like dead space where we're, we're thinking like, ah, oh, you know, what, what should we do? Um, you know, what does the game need? So, uh, as far as like, so big updates like this, I think we should have, uh, more, more often. Um, but this is like, this is months worth of work, right? So, and then in between that, we want to do, uh, smaller updates. So, uh, as far as what's actually coming this year, I can guarantee that there will be some terrain changes. Yeah. Uh, I can, I can guarantee that, uh, you will see an expansion of, uh, war assets, um, and, you know, the sanctuary and the systems that surround that. Uh, as far as the the next big thing, though, I think that we need to uh, we'll talk about it more um, in, internally because it's totally not like like the stuff is not designed, you know, for the stuff that we want to do uh, to its entirety. But I would say that you'll probably be able to see something uh, toward the end of the year that's going to be exciting. Exciting! What the hell is that? Oh, <laughs> I'll be there to check I it out. I guess you'll find out. All right, Real, thank you so much for this interview. I yeah, learned a thanks lot. Thanks for having me. You're you're very welcome. I feel like I know you since a long time, but this is the first time actually that we talk uh, voice to voice. Is that yeah. it? Yeah, it's the first time we talk. Ah, maybe we did a YouTuber gameplay. Some, some I don't, I don't even remember. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah. It's- it's actually the first time that now we engage in a more more deep conversation. I really appreciate it. So thanks real so much for all the work you've done for Planetside 2. Uh, keep up the hype. I'm going to be there. Keep uh, I'm going to keep posting epic videos because I really love it and I believe in, in this project. Even though people tell me to change game because it's a too small player base, I believe in this project. So thanks real. I'm going to... I'm gonna, how do you say, release you from now on.
<laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you for having me. And and definitely keep doing the videos. I think you do a great job and they're they're a joy to see every time. Awesome. Any last last thoughts? Do you wanna you know, do you wanna say something for the audience? Uh just try to be kind to one another. Like I think we're all kind of in this together when it comes to, to Planetside 2. And the more that we can uh, motivate one another uh, and like introduce players to the game and give them a good experience, then then the game itself will be you know, successful. So it's it's up to all of us. Awesome. So now you post updates about game development mostly on your Twitter, right? Yes. Uh, somewhere else? No. <laughs> All right, your Twitter. No, yeah, helps. it's uh, so at Rel Plays uh, is my Twitter. You can feel free to tweet at me. Great. And, uh, yeah. Got it, Rel. Thank you so much. Thank you.